In terms of what we're expecting from Ben Bernanke, is there a case at the moment in the U.S. for QE3, or is it premature, and are the markets not understanding what he can and he cannot do? Will he announce anything drastic when he speaks in Wyoming tomorrow? Well, I don't know whether it has to be something like QE3, but there is a case for continued expansion in the money supply. It's better to keep the money supply expanding at a, a steady rate. And uh, I think that uh, it's not necessary to announce in advance it's going to be a six-month or eight-month period. I think that they just need to make sure they keep increasing the rate. Now, from the standpoint of what the market is expecting, I guess they are expecting something in terms of QE1 or QE3, but I think they... Uh, they uh, and you need to be told what uh, what the Fed's intentions are yeah. with respect to expanding the money supply and credit. And, and Ms. Wendel, I wanted to get to actually to the situation here in Europe because in the last couple of seconds we had some breaking news. The Greek 10-year bond yield has risen to a new Euro era record of 18.4 percent. Now we've had quite a subdued week for the debt crisis in Europe because a lot of the investors weren't focusing on these bond yields. Are we going to see a lot of bond deals go higher because we're nowhere near the resolution of the debt crisis? Well, it looks as if that is that is bad news. It's not unexpected in part because we've been in a situation where with the addition of the difficulties in Italy that this is going to add a whole new set of proportions to the problems of the, the euro area and uh, financing that. And uh, that uh, certainly you need to have strong action now on the part of the leadership in Europe of uh, Merkel and uh, Sarkozy, of course, and as well as others. Uh, you certainly need to have steps on three fronts. The first step is uh, liquidity, uh, enough liquidity to avert uh, 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 insolvency of uh, mm -hmm. several of the countries. Mm -hmm. that, and that's a very important short-run thing. The second thing is you need to get uh, a definite adjustment on the part of the weak countries in terms of uh, not just austerity, but in terms mm -hmm. of freeing up their economies in order to get uh, more growth going. And uh, you definitely have to show uh, accountability, uh, accountability for the these countries for their difficulties. And once, that, once the accountability has been demonstrated, when they make some measures, uh, cutting back measures yeah. that may include entitlements, then, uh, then you can get some more support from Northern Europe. And, and uh, Mr. Mundell, of course, these the three third, points... Uh, the third... Yeah, these three points are, are, are very clear. Well, and I think... That, the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I just want to say the third point was uh, a step toward governance, deepening the structure of, of European fiscal policy, of, of consolidating it. You need to have a minister of finance with a lot of power. Yeah, and I guess on paper, of course, all of this makes sense, and it seems obvious to a lot of market commentators and a lot of economists, but for the politicians, it's difficult to sell it at home. And so a lot of the problems that we've had is that they just don't seem to understand the urgency of the problem. We've been talking also about euro bonds. That hasn't been put on the table. Do bond yields need to reach a point where the European governments get very scared? Do we need to see a bond yield on Italian and Spanish at, at, at 6 6.5% for them to click into action? Well... Well, I think they, I think they should be scared now. I think that uh, some of them are scared, but they may not be indicating it. The public isn't completely aware of this yet, but uh, I, I hope it doesn't take a higher increased, uh, very greatly increased yields in order to make drive home that point. There has to be real solid adjustment, and that has to include some entitlement programs. No good just to say you're going to cut down on garbage collection or, or police protection or education or something like that. You have to do something with yeah. respect to the uh, social welfare system. And what are the chances today of a double dip recession across the world? And what are the chances of a double dip recession in Europe? Are we going straight for it? Well, I think we're in a double dip slowdown. But we're, we're, the, this, I think, is a slowdown. It's not necessarily a, a recession. I don't see that coming. But I do think on, their action in the United States has to come mainly on the fiscal side, not on the, not on the monetary side. What you need to do is to get a cut in the corporate tax rate, down to 20 percent, for example, and you need to make the Bush tax cuts, which were extended for two years by President Obama, make those tax cuts permanent. And then I think the whole climate would completely change around in the United States and we'd be back on the track of a normal recovery. Yeah. And if we do see a double dip recession worldwide, who's going to be blamed, the Europe or the U.S.? 
Uh, well, I think both of them are going to be blamed. I think Europe for its own fiscal difficulties and because they've now, in Europe, uh, lost the tool of fiscal policy to do much in the way of tax cuts to promote uh, recovery. They've lost that possibility because of the cl system clogged full of debts. And in the U.S., because there's no real fundamental action on the fiscal side, the only thing the U.S. talks about is a big increase in spending again, which yeah. has turned out to be part of the problem. And how concerned are you that it now seems that actually it's the central banks across the world, be it the ECB or the Fed, that need to step in to do the jobs that really the governments should be doing, which is spurring growth? Um, well, uh, it's uh, hard to get the government. There's no world authority, and uh, the International Monetary Fund isn't really uh, up, to, up to par yet because it's in the process of changing the transition period. Uh, so I think uh, you need to get, uh, I think the leadership has to always come from the United States. Europe isn't in a position to assume leadership here. I think it has to be American leadership. All right, Robert Mundell, a real pleasure to have you on the show this morning. Thank you so much.